September 30th. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Galatians 4, 6. The Apostle employs in the original two different languages. It may not be improper to infer that in using both the Syriac and Greek form, the one being familiar to the Jew and the other to the Gentile, he would denote that both the Christian Jew and the believing Gentile were children of one family and were alike privileged to approach God as a father. Christ, our peace, has broken down the middle wall of partition that was between them. And now, at the same mercy seat, the Christian Jew and the believing Gentile, both one in Christ Jesus, meet as rays of light converge and bend in one common center at the feet of the reconciled Father. The expressions to set forth the peculiarity and intensity of the affection. Literally, Abba, Father, signifies my Father. No bond servant was permitted thus to address the master of the family. It was a privilege peculiar and sacred to the child. And when our blessed Lord would teach his disciples to pray, he led them to the mercy seat and sealed their precious words upon their lips, Our Father, which are in heaven. And after his resurrection, with increased emphasis and intensity, did he give utterance to the same truth. Previously to his death, his words were, I go to the Father. But when he came back from the grave, every truth he had before enunciated seemed quickened as with new life. How tender and touching were his words. I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. No longer a bond slave, but a son. O oh, claim the dignity and privilege of your birthright. Approach God as your Father. Abba, Father. How tender the relation. How intense the affection. What power it imparts to prayer. What may you not ask, and what can God refuse with Abba, Father, breathing in lowliness and love from your lips? Remember, it is inalienable, unchangeable relationship. Never in any instance or under any circumstance the most aggravated does God forget it. He is as much our Father when he chastises as when he approves, as much so when he frowns as when he smiles, as much so when he brims the cup of adversity as when he bids us drink the cup of salvation. Behold, the touching display of it in his gracious restorings. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him in a compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. In all his wanderings, that father's love had never lost sight of his wayward child. It tracked him along all his windings and waited and welcomed his return. We may doubt and debase and deny our divine relationship, yet God will never disown us as his children, nor disinherit us as his heirs. We may cease to act as a child. He will never cease to love as a father, to him, that as to a father at all times repaired.